So, first off, uh, before anybody's like, you know, you're so late, you're so late. First off, <laughs> um, I have seen Watchmen numerous times uh, since I saw it opening weekend in 2000, 2009. Um, I'm a fan of Zack Snyder. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm a fan of his work. I, I, you know, there, there's, so, there's so many aspects to his filmography that I love. Uh, and that I think are fantastic. So I've seen this film many times. I've seen the theatrical cut. I've seen the director's cut. And I, I've seen the, the ultimate cut about once or twice before. And um, it's been a few years since I've seen any cut in general of Watchmen. And with HBO's Watchmen coming tomorrow, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm over the moon excited for that. So. I wanted to go in and talk about um, Zack Snyder's Watchmen because I don't believe I've ever talked about it on my channel before, certainly never reviewed it. And um, I'm going to be, I, I, today, I literally just got done watching the, uh, the, the ultimate cut and um, though I am technically reviewing the ultimate cut, uh, what I'm saying, it, it's, it's it's my general thoughts of Zack Snyder's work here. Like the theatrical cut, the director's cut, the ultimate cut, uh, all the thoughts that I'm about to say, I, I have the same thoughts, you know. Uh, my thoughts are the same for every cut is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I am about to specifically review uh, the ultimate cut. That bitch was long as fuck. It is literally three hours and 35 minutes long, and um, I'm going to be completely upfront with you, because this movie was just so fucking long. <laughs> oh my god, and I, and I really want to go do something else. I'm just going to be very blunt with you. I think this is a bad movie, regardless of what cut we're talking about, and def definitely when we're talking about uh, this cut of the film. I think it's I think it's a bad film. Now, I want to review the ultimate cut because it's literally his unfiltered, uncut vision cast on the silver screen, you know. Uh, so I want to review that as opposed to the the other two. But to backpedal a little bit <laughs> to talk about the po the positives really quick. Um, I think that the CGI is pretty good. Um, the CGI with Dr. Manhattan, I have mixed feelings about. Um, sometimes he looks good, uh, sometimes he just looks a bit wonky to me and it, it, it kind of brings me out of the movie. I think that the, the cast was perfect. Uh, like I think Billy, I think Billy is like a perfect Dr. Manhattan and his voice is like perfect. Um, I think this, this, this whole montage sequence right here that has that Konyo with Scott C song playing. I think it's just haunting and brilliant. Uh, I love this moment here where he's like working and simultaneously talking to Malin Ackerman, you know. Um, and a, a lot of them kind of look like their characters a little bit. And, uh, you know, so yeah, the, the, visually it's a good looking film. And, um, but for the, but honestly, outside of that, this is a bad movie, man. This is a bad movie. Honestly, I think the, the biggest thing going for this film is that it's pretty visually stunning. Um, outside of that, uh, the movie just falls apart for me. The woman who's playing S Silk Spectre in this movie, like, she kind of looks like the comic book character, but her performance is so one note and just so emotionally wooden. Uh, she's like a fucking, she's ex she is literally as exciting as a wooden door, okay? <laughs> just her line delivery I thought was just pretty awful. So like literally all of her scenes are rough for me. Oh, Jackie Earl Haley. Yeah, he was perfect at Rorschach, okay? And his voice was astonishingly perfect. Like literally, he just sounded like the creepiest, meanest motherfucker 
ever. Like he literally just sounds mean. Like he sounds as if like his his mouth and throat smell like rotten fruit or something. Like he seems intimidating and and and, and like dirty <laughs> and, and like like uh, <laughs> almost like borderline evil. You know, uh, there's a whole dark brooding atmosphere that he emits from his performance. He is just absolutely he just absolutely nailed it. I love that scene where he like looks at the doctor and, uh, he looks at the doctor and he has the mask, you know, and he's like, Hey doctor, what do you see? You know? Or when uh, you know, he's like, uh, you're you're not locked up with them. You're locked up with me <sighs> So perfect. All all the sequence sequences with him and Moloch play, played by Matt Ferber and uh, just any scene with him it just sends tingles up my spine he's just absolutely amazing Jeffrey Dean Morgan was a very inspired choice uh, and there's many moments with him that I think are, are just pretty awesome but again the cast is fantastic so that's nothing to worry about well well I have fucking I don't know Malin, Malin Ackerman, I think, was the wrong choice here. Uh, for some reason, Patrick Wilson just is just a bit of a... I don't know. He just doesn't entirely work for me in his performance. Um, when I think of Night Owl, I think of someone... I don't know, like, uh, uh, Patrick Wilson, he still looks very Hollywood-ish, you know? I, I wish they had gone with, like, an unknown or something like that that, like, nailed the part. Or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but most of the hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences are just uh, the framing and execution is just a bit awkward for me, you know? Um, sometimes the, the violence there comes across as a bit silly, a bit hammy, a bit cheesy, you know? Uh, like, like, there was even a moment where uh, the comedian was fighting Ozzy, and there's a moment where he's like, pew, 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 pew. and uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but he did something like that, and I was like, the, the when, uh, so in this sequence right here, the comedian, oh my god, or this moment with Carla, or uh, it, it just, oh, oh my god, Pres Richard Nixon, what happened? What happened? What I'm trying to say is that the makeup was so awful when it when it comes to the the de-aging or, or 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 making people look older than they actually were the makeup was just bad what oh my god what no a lot of the music choices just did not work for me uh there were moments that i thought were incredibly jarring uh, when it comes to marrying the the images and the music together um like this sequence right here, I think it was supposed to be funny and cute, but instead for me it came across as really awkward and cringy. Or this moment right here. Alright, so in the comic book, I mean yes, you you I mean you certainly you cer you certainly see them fucking, you know, and then there's this, you know in the comic book this moment was funny and tongue in cheek, you know. It's like a, I guess when he Bust and nod the ship at the same time with boom, you know, nice little clever, clever little joke. Okay, you know, and then uh, you know, there's this little moment here, you know, but that's it. It's not like a long drawn out thing. It's like okay, they they fucked, you know, it's something we um, the sex scene is like kind of cute and. Uh, light-hearted and we pass over it pretty quickly you know what I'm saying but but in the movie in the movie what the fuck that sequence is like totally different in my mind at least like in, in the movie like the music choice I was just like ah. and then and then the execution was like what the fuck it was just so long and, it, and at, at one point I almost felt like a like a <laughs> like a soft porn movie all of a sudden and like like I mean, Zach was just like really getting in there, you know, he really wanted you to see them really fucking, you know, and I was just like, I, I felt like this was way too drawn out, you know, this was way too drawn out, and uh, uh, like, couldn't we have like turned it down and like, like made it actually funny, like, like, uh, nothing about it was funny or cute, it was just like, what, what the fuck happened? Oh yeah, the, the big twist 
You know, the big twist, uh, the big twist at the end, much better in the comic books. Because in the comics, like, it was so much more creepy and disturbing and haunting and, and grim and, 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 and all that shit. Um, and what's weird is that, like, uh, Zack <laughs> was so faithful, but, like, why wasn't Zack faithful to this moment right here? Why didn't he rec recreate uh, these moments right here, you know? Because uh, these moments is what made the, the twist so unbelievable and mind-bending and, and horrifying in, in the comic books, you know? Like, look at all of this. In the comics, it was this moment was way more terrifying, way more uh, mind blowing, uh, way more mind blowing. Especially there was a giant fucking squid, for God's sakes, you know. Uh, you know this moment in the comic books was just so like, just so mind blowing, you know, and violent and disturbing and shit. Like, look at all of that. You know, just look at all that. But but in the movie, in the movie, this moment is just very, not only glossed over, but it's just very, uh, that's, the same moment in the film is just so boring to me, you know? It, it doesn't hit as hard. I don't know. I, I remember when I got to this point in the film, I, because like, again, her, her acting is not great in this film uh is, is very very flat think like Kristen stewart and twilight you know uh so you know by the time i got to this point in the film i literally started zoning out and i wasn't like multitasking i wasn't on my phone i literally just started zoning out <laughs> literally and I, I looked at the clock and i was like oh my god uh the black freighter shit i did not care for. Uh, if I was ever going to watch this movie again, which I'm not, if I was ever going to watch this movie again, I would completely skip the, the Black Freighter moments uh, in the comic. Uh, they are utterly fascinating and a great icing on the cake to the overall narrative. Um, but in the film, uh, the, the artwork um, and the animation here is so hammy and feels very un uninspired <laughs> literally the music is so bad for the, uh, for the black freighter shit that the music literally sounds like like if I went to Walmart and they were selling some kind of bundle pack of like Hollywood movie music uh, 101 you know and I, and, I, and I bought that bitch for like $5.99 um, and they were pretty shit for obvious reasons and brought that home and tried to score a piece, uh, piece of film to that. Uh, that that's that's what the, that's honestly what the music sounds like. Like the music here is so forgettable and just totally, totally not great in any capacity. What else? Oh yeah, all the sequences with that that one kid in the glasses uh, by the newsstand uh, with that one guy. I forgot his name. Uh, all those sequences were just whatever, like their performances, both of their performances were very just meh. So from that, those sequences were just very meh, uh, or just very, very boring. I felt so compelled to like just bust out my phone and start texting every single time these sequences came up. Like the, and because of that, from that, uh, this whole sequence right here, you know, when the bomb goes off, doesn't doesn't work. It, it, it like this moment should be devastating. It should be horrifying. It should be so disturbing, and, and it's not because of the shit I just said. You don't care. You don't really care for these people. You see that these people are dying, but you don't. You know, you're not like substantially emotionally invested in the story. So unfortunately, when this moment happens, I mean, yeah, it's fucked up, but like. How many people are really going to be shedding a tear during this sequence, you know? Like, how many people are, are actually going to be sitting there shaken and actually substantially disturbed by the execution of this sequence? Probably not many fucking people. And by the way, I don't think that the ending of the movie is better than the ending of the book. I think, 
I think there's nothing, uh, well, I will say, the sequence where, like, Rorschach explodes against the snow, and he, and he leaves behind, like, a, a Rorschach ink blot on the surface of the snow, that is just, like, a 20 out of 10, perfect, chills, going up and down my spine, goosebumps everywhere, that part is just amazing, that part is a 10 out of 10, what, what an ingenious concept, okay, that was fucking fantastic. Uh, but then again, on the flip side, uh, this whole moment right here where like Dr. Manhattan's big and he's like reaching down in there like like the CGI just just took me out and just took me out of the movie like it it didn't work for me it just like took me out of the movie like every literally every single time they show the CGI cat the CGI is just awful it is awful to the point that it, it, it literally looks worse than the CGI cat from The Walking Dead. The tiger. I, I really love the, the sequence that scored to Nat King Cole's uh, Unforgettable. Uh, I mean, if you, if you look past the awkward fighting techniques and the way that it was shot and framed, um, and the terrible makeup, uh, that sequence is actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I do think that the, the opening title sequence is just brilliant. I think this uh, this near rape sequence uh, is executed masterfully. Uh, it's just it, it left me feeling the same way as when it happened in the comic books. Uh, so that sequence is like another ten out of ten sequence. Another ten out of ten sequence. But on the flip side, there's a there's a few scenes where they show Jackie Earl Haley as. Jackie Earl Haley w without the mask on. Uh, there was just too many of those. I, I would have preferred if, like, we only, um, you know, the first time we see his face is when it's like, "Give me back my face! Give me back my face!" I like. I wish we only seen his face then. I think that would have been more powerful, in my opinion. And then, and then the, this moment here where Silk Spectre and Night Owl they're having a conversation. Now, uh, this moment in the comic books was terrifying because. The concept of, uh, of superheroes sort of like uh, inappropriately laughing at the deaths, uh, at the death or deaths of other superheroes or, or innocent people um, was like terrifying and ghoulish and it just made you think like, damn, that's fucked up and like super realistic, like, whoa. Uh, but in, in the movie, it just came off very hammy and and uh, the execution just felt clumsy for me. It felt like like some C C CW, uh, channel CW superhero shit when they're at their worst or when they're at their cringiest. Are there great scenes in the, in the film? I mean, of course the film has some, some great scenes, but I think overall, I just think the execution of the film is just messy. I mean, there's some good, again, there's some great scenes, but for the most part, overall, I feel like this movie's a bit of a hot mess. I feel like Zack Snyder should, he should have just made a great Watchmen movie. Instead, he tried to make this Watchmen movie that was 100% faithful to this, right? And then, it seemed like he had this this very singular, uh, you know, reinterpretation of Watchmen, and it just seemed like when he tried to combine the two, um, he just, he, he, he stumbled. At least for me, anyways. Uh, for me, um, those things didn't, didn't marry very well together. Uh, personally, I'm feeling a six. <clears throat> feeling a six out of ten for the ultimate cut. And uh, for the director's cut, for the theatrical cut, period. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a 6 out of 10 overall. But um, what about you?